Hey guys, welcome back. I have another book review for you today. Um, this one is a little bit different, I guess. I wanted to do something a little bit lighter. We've been reading some pretty heavy books on this channel lately. And I wanted to just do something a little bit light, maybe even a little bit frivolous. And I was hoping that I would really enjoy it. So, I read Greatest Mysteries of the Unexplained. This is by Lisa Doncaster and Andrew Holland. And it is sort of similar to the Conspiracy Theory um, book that I read where it just has like a lot of little things throughout. This one has like Greatest Mysteries of the Unexplained. Um, I gave this book two stars. It is not my favorite book. I struggled. Um, it was fine. It was easy to read, but the information in it was, in my opinion, very lacking. So on the front here, it says a compelling collection of the world's most perplexing phenomenon. That's not what this was. <laughs> um, so it has a lot of different parts. We talk about like missing people. We talk about like sea monsters. Um, lost civilizations, all kinds of things. But I felt like we like missed out on a lot of things. Um, like there's, I don't even know really how to explain it. So there's parts like where she talks about like how Agatha Christie like went missing. Then they found her in like a spa or something. But it is literally like a page long. Or there's parts about ancient missing civilizations. Um, like so she mentions the Aztec and the Maya. And then says, like, well, we don't know why they're missing, but, like, or why they disappeared, I guess. But, like, we do because, you know, the Spanish came in and disease wiped them out and they were taking so much of their stuff. Like, it, we know that we know the answer to that. But at the same time, she didn't talk about, like, other, like, civilizations that we've talked about, like, throughout mythology or something. Like, two that stuck out to me were Troy, like, Priam's Troy from... Um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and then, like, Ithaca, Odysseus's home um, from, like, the Odyssey. She didn't even mention things like that. She talked about, like, great monuments, but, like, she didn't mention any monuments like the Georgia Guidestones, which, like, to this day, no one knows exactly who made them, but they're just, like, sitting in this field in Georgia. Um, the statues at Easter Island, for instance, like, why are, who made them? Why are their bodies buried, but their heads are out? The Nazca lines in Peru, like, to me, there were so many things that could have been mentioned here that really weren't. There was, like, a part about lake monsters, and there was like, one line about Nessie, and the others were some, like, lake monsters in New York or something that are quite similar. But, I don't know, a lot of things that have even been disproven today, there was a part where this girl was, like, crying crystals, but that was, like, disproven that it was, that she was just, like, putting crystals in her eye, and you could, like, pull it down. And they would pop out. I don't know. I was quite frustrated. I was really hoping that I would enjoy this. I usually do enjoy things like this. I listen to podcasts about things like this. Like, I think it's fun to talk about like the unexplained type things that can kind of be explained, but there's so many different like reasons or theories out there. I usually really enjoy that. I did not really enjoy that here. Um, one of my biggest complaints is that all of these like entries kind of read like that first paragraph on Wikipedia that summarizes the entire article. Like there's nothing like overly deep. We don't really talk about any of the theories, maybe like one or two sentences sometimes about these theories, but otherwise like not really at all. She mentions the Anasazi tribe um, and that there's a lot of artifacts and stuff from them and then just kind of goes into this like spiel about how like civilizations are lost but doesn't talk about the artifacts or the reasoning behind why the Anasazi were no longer there things like that I don't know it just really like grated on my nerves the way that that was done and there's also a couple things about like spectral photography and like haunted churches and stuff like that but it wasn't even like why not talk about like Greyfriars Kirkyard which is meant to be like one of the most haunted cemeteries in the world um, just I don't know, it was just like things that weren't very interesting and there was just like not a lot of information about them. And I kind of was annoyed because at least the conspiracy theory book that I had read before, 
they at least like talked about the theories a little bit um, and it wasn't just like all of this stuff that's already been disproven. I do think that this author is English or British. I think that because I should have looked it up, but I think that just because like everything is done in like metric um, and just some of the like turns of phrase and stuff, I think she's British. Um, so we do get a little bit of stuff about the British Isles, but as usual, it mostly sticks to America. That seems to be one of those things that happens with books like this is they stick to America a lot. And I think that there's a lot of things that like this all over the world. So I'm not sure why like America is the most popular. Um, I know that we probably have like quite a few of these unexplained things here, but I think that there's so many others that also deserve attention. So I was disappointed in that. I was just disappointed. Um, I've said before I don't like to give books low ratings, but I was just really disappointed. And I felt like this was like badly researched. There are no notes. So this book ends on page... Sorry, I'm just like having a problem turning the page. So it ends on page 302. And then there is a picture credits page that says all images copyright Getty images except for page 33. No notes where any of this information came from. This is the end of the book. There's nothing on these pages. Um, and I'm kind of like, how do you write a historical book um, about, or a nonfiction book talking about all of these things when there's no notes? Where did you get your information? I would love to know where you got your information because maybe I want to look more deeply into something. So where did you find it? Did you find it on Wikipedia? Because I could also look things up on Wikipedia, but um, we all know at this point that Wikipedia is not a reliable source. So where did you find it? Um, I did see some of these aren't even on Wikipedia. I did look some of them up. They're not even on Wikipedia. So like, did you, what? I saw one entry on like the Museum of Weird, but it had already been disproven. So. I don't know, like, I'm more frustrated, I think, with the fact that there are no notes. There is nothing to tell you where any of this information came from. So how do we know that any of it is, like, even the least bit scholarly? We don't. And that's kind of frustrating in a nonfiction book because I don't want to read a Wikipedia page. Like, I could have done that myself and saved myself $4 that might sound kind of harsh and I'm sorry about that but like it's very true I don't suggest that you pick this book up if you are interested in any kind of unexplained phenomena if you're interested in the Bermuda Triangle the Devil's Triangle um, the Aztec and the Maya the Anasazi literally anything of the sort buy a book about it or read the Wikipedia article because you get more information there than you do here um, like buy a book about that, look up articles about that, do something for the things that you're specifically interested in, I guess, but like do not, do not go buy this book. I bought this book at Books Million for three ninety seven, dollars um, So like that's $4 I'll never get back. And it was not what I was hoping for. It was not what I expected and I am quite disappointed with it. I did read it, so there's that, um, and that is a couple hours of my life that I will also never get back. So, like, what did, what did I do? Like, but yes, if you're interested in things like this, I suggest looking them up individually or finding a book that has better source material so you are actually able to see the research that went into finding things like this. And that's, that's the best that I can suggest for you don't pick up this book. It's not worth your money. If you find it for free, sure, give it a read, but like, don't pick this up. It's not worth your money. And that is all that I have for you guys today. Um, next week, I'm going to do something slightly different and just give you a couple of reading tips. That's something I'm going to start doing, I think, on holiday weeks because I don't want to bog you guys down. I know that during the holidays, we're all with our families. We're all doing a lot of stuff. I don't want to bog you guys down with a book review, especially if it's like an angry book review like this one. So next week is going to be a little bit different and I hope you guys enjoy that. And I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.